entertaining. And that way, if I lose, it doesn't look so bad. We're in 5,966th place. I'm going to cap this at an hour. So once this hits, like, seven hours... Uh, so I'm really capping this to 51 minutes, but okay, I have the plugin turned off. That's good. So yeah, we're just going to play some games for an hour, and then maybe switch it up. Um, so lately I've been having some excellent successes with the Grinfeld over the board. D6 is the... oh, right, so D6 is happening there. Um, I typically play this from the other side of this position. So it's extremely strange to me to be playing against my own opening. Um, so I'm not totally sure about this. I'm actually quite curious. Um, how this is supposed to proceed. I like this next chord. That one. It's a deceptive cadence. Um, when you think that the chords are going to resolve, uh, when there's a some tension that builds up and then resolves in an unexpected manner, they call that a deceptive cadence. Assuming, of course, it does resolve, and it did. Um, it's possible my opponent might not be an opening theoretician, despite playing this highly theoretical stuff. Oh, hang on. I need my bishop on the center file, otherwise c4 gets uh, loose. Really, I'm just hoping he pushes b6. Maybe I should have egged it. Okay, there it is. If we were playing Contra Chess, here's where I would double the stakes. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, so we've actually got some minutes to reflect on what happened here. Um, let's see, do I still have this? Yeah, this is still using the Masters database. So how should I have played this? Knight f3 or bishop e2 are both fine. f3 is less popular by far. Well, actually, not by too far. Um, bishop e3 is the main move here. I expected c5, although I forgot. Knight ge2 is appropriate after c5, as is d takes c5. How does this work? Oh, we get an endgame. Wait, what? What is this? Why would black agree to this? I don't get it. Oh, okay, the long diagonal is weak, and black's activity is fantastic, so fine. I guess I can accept that. Um, alternatively, I could just play knight g e2 and transpose into other stuff, but have deprived myself of other transposition opportunities. Um, d5 is playable, but this is what I was thinking of doing. But that all said, um, well, no, this is the main line stuff. Assuming, of course, I'm playing f3 instead of other moves. So I'm just trying to build up the resolve to, if I get this position again, is f3 going to be the move? Or am I going to pick something else next time? Um, yeah, no, I could play this. It's not that great. Can we take a moment and just look at knight f3? I've seen this before. Oh my goodness, this is the main line. Duh. Duh. Alright, but why was I so concerned about bishop g4 here? That chord is beautiful, too. 
da, da, da. It's a Picardy third in the middle of a minor key, but also the minor tone seems to be present there. Um, so I'm not even sure if that's a deceptive cadence or not, because it's not exactly a resolution. Um, anyway, so yeah, why was I so concerned about this? Masters have seen this many times before. Bishop e3 has been played. Bishop e2 has been played. Bishop e3. The worst that seems to happen is castle and bishop e2. So why does bishop e2 have such a worse track record here? Okay, it's six one way, half a dozen the other. They both transpose into each other. Um, but yeah, bishop g4 is nothing to fear, because black has no immediate strike in the center. If they try to do this, then d5. There's so many other lines where you don't play d5, but here you do. Um, okay, and then we go back. And then... castle? Oh! Okay, so yeah, if black plays a premature bishop g4, we can get this stuff. As long as I just keep my head on straight. Um, there is no knight g4, there's no random bs anywhere here. It's true I haven't yet activated this queenside rook, but um, this is still playable. I'm going to bookmark that, though, just to remind myself that there's stuff i got to learn. If I want to play over the board, got to know my openings, not just BS them. Though I get pretty far BSing it, to be honest. D4? Can we get another Grunfeld? Well, let's play an Alucan. Because, you know, I don't know this at all. Let's play it. Okay, now we're in Vienna territory. Alright. Now, do I play d5 just to really mix things up? <laughs> do I? Well, yeah, I do. Alright, so. Um, again, not my finest moment, but. I mean, this is too fun. I've got to look into this. This looks like a pretty legit troll opening. If such a thing can exist, it must be this. So we deny the knight the e2 square. So I guess he's planning knight d5? Question mark? Okay, the knight retreats. So this is... I don't even know. I don't even know. Um... This is, I have to trade my bishop for the knight, or I lose a pawn. But... I think this is okay. This seems like a pretty legit troll opening. Alright. He's not going to test me. Testing me would be taking on d4 straight away and seeing what I come up with, um, which he's not going to do. So now we just push and win. That knight is never finding a home. Poor knight. Let's pretend to do some sort of attack here. This might provoke h3. It should provoke g3 if he knows what he's doing. Um, I'm just playing this provocative move just to make him think. Alright, so... Alright. He's called my bluff. You're right. I was bluffing. I don't really have anything. Um, I tried, though. But no, this actually closes up the queen side, so it's not terrible. It's just not good. 
Um, well, my knight would be more active on b4. Given that this center is locked, I should try to keep these pawns together. That is a target. It would help if I had a light squared bishop, if I weren't a dum dum. So, I caused all these problems. I'll have to fix them somehow. Um, yeah, okay, we'll anchor the knight. The point is, if he does bishop takes, I should do pawn, the a pawn takes, um, so that my rook has a place to go. Disgusting as that position is, that's my best hope here, to try to win. Or I could have just taken this pawn. Um, yeah, we should take the pawn before things get too messy. Although this doesn't work either. Um, oh boy. Right, there's that in between shot. So now do I do knight takes f2? To Zvishen Zvishenzug or something? Or, like, what do I do? How do I try to make a game of this? Um, We take this bishop, and I'm still hitting the rook. Right, so he takes my knight, and now I have to retreat my rook. Let's pick a dark square. Everything's fine. <laughs> Am I down a piece? Not yet. Give it time. We'll be down a piece soon enough. No need to rush it. I need this square. I need b4. Man, this FTL track is excellent for marathons. I'll have to try this sort of idea more often. Alright, so... I can get this square now, perhaps? Of course I'm concerned about h4, but, I mean, what can you do? You can be concerned, but being concerned doesn't fix a problem. Unless there's some kind of constructive action to be taken there, and I just don't see it. So now he's got to support this knight. Oh, but that's actually a fork. I thought a4 was protected twice. I miscounted. Uh, so he's got to protect the knight, and I just win the pawn. And suddenly I'm in it. In it to win it. Right, so he protects the knight. Do I take e4 instead? Because, like, a4 is an easy target. At least now it is, but later it's going to be a mess to try to pick up. They offer a draw. I did see the offer, but it's none too enticing. So I'm still hitting the center pawn. Yeah, my bishops... oh. Okay, we'll take one of those. Nice. 4,000th place. You suppose I'll make it into the top 1,000? Um, before the seven hour mark. Okay, this track is pretty weird. Here we go, another Alicon. Or Alakine, depending how, where, whether you're from USA or from somewhere else. Um,. Wait, is this the thing where I do the thing? And I'll just allow him to take? I think it is. Um, 
If I can get him to play a4, then we'll take here. Or maybe I push d5. Okay, that's fun. YOLO, here we go. <laughs> Let's get our king ready. Oh. Never mind. Apparently, I actually played that okay. Who knew chess could be so easy? Ha! All your pawn are belong to me. Alright, so I think he's having fun. That's okay, we can have fun too. We can have fun taking the pieces, and he can have fun offering them. So... It's a pretty close game so far. Really, anybody could win this. Alright, well... Yeah, I think that guy... I'll have to report him. Or at least look and see if he's worth reporting. Possibly you might not be following the rules of the site, which say you can't throw games. Um. Wait, is that the move that gives him pause? B6? Really? Yeah. No, I think that account should be reported both because um, he was throwing games and because the username's inappropriate. I'm just too busy to report him at the moment. But, like, there's multiple rules that that person's breaking. So... Um... So that's why we have rules and why we have moderators to handle all this stuff. Alright, so... I see what he's up to. Watch, he's gonna lift the rook. And then he's gonna bring in the other rook. But knight on f8, there's no mate. Now he's got both of his rooks doing nothing on the h-file. Which is funny. Um, now, I admit, I was concerned about this, but I didn't want to think about it, so I didn't think about it. I mean, yeah, it's all well and fine and all to say you know him and stuff, but he's still breaking the rules, so... Um... So you should probably be reported for all that. And just reporting them lets uh, the moderators choose whether or not they take action, depending on how they enforce the rules of the site. So, um, but if nobody reports it, then what can really be done? Um, so... Do I play f5? Or is that too... No. So if he ever pushes g5, I just push, push h5. If he doesn't push g5, I am fine. I can just um, enjoy this exciting non-activity um, in this fortress of a position. Alright, so... He shuts his queen out of the action. Um, do I do pawn takes? This would help my rook get into play. Did I push d5? Holy moly, that's that's spicy. I think d5 is the way to go here. Uh, d5, d takes c is what I'm concerned about. Here, let's start to open this up and then push d5 while his king's still in the center. Um, that looks fun. I couldn't tell you what's going on here, but I can tell you that it looks fun. Because, like, 
Every pawn that liquidates is one fewer obstacle between my pieces and his king. So... Um, yeah, I'm not sure what he's going to do. <laughs> I like how the FTL soundtrack is so appropriate for this tense but quiet moment. All right, so I looked. There are no checks here, um, but there are three white pieces on the e-file, and I have a pawn attacking the frontmost of those pieces. Um, probably his best try is to use the one knight to protect the other in some hope of launching a mating attack somehow. Oh, <laughs> I mean, the Candidates is a pretty important tournament. Um, I just, I don't know, I've watched a lot of the Candidates, but it, it is a very important tournament. Um, it's ironic that some people would rather watch this, but, you know, there's a market for everything. Not to say all markets are good things, but, yeah. I got Candidates out basically. I had too much candidates tournament stuff, and I figure, you know, let's just play some chess. Kind of with Magnus, um, do we really need a world champion? Or can we just um, run tournaments all the time and just report on who does well? And not worry about, like, calling somebody the champion. Just have tournaments, people who uh, have them all be equally important and not have to worry about a world champion title and just keep things simple. Um, so I'd want to move the knight, but that kind of takes my position apart. So let's move the queen instead, I guess. Where do I go? This looks fun, too. Why don't I do that? Because now I'm threatening rook takes pawn, and then rook takes the other pawn. So this forces his pieces to move away, but now... Now my queen hops all over this business, my rook's over here... It's just beautiful. I wonder if my opponent's like rated, I don't know, 1900 or something. I'm going to put a guess out there and say 1900. Um, um, hmm. Okay, let's get the rook out of harm's way. Otherwise I lose the rook to a fork here. Right, so my other point was that this is check. This can't be bad. So there's the threat. If the knight moves, I have a back rank check. This is amazing. I've not played such a good game in a very long time. Um, I could just take that and the knight has to move, but it can't move. Yeah, this is a really good game on my part. And because the knight moved, I have this check winning the queen. Wow. Okay. Uh, they're holding on to the queen. Um, I don't have checkmate here. I wish. I'll just take it.
Just open the center and let the madness begin. Man, I don't even have a cool checkmate here. I just take his stuff. It's kind of a disappointing way to end it. Um... Still don't have a checkmate. Oh, there it is. That was a good game. That was an exceptionally good game. Um, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what Stockfish says in terms of calling it good or bad. And we finished right before the 40 move mark, so that's on par for a decent game. I played a good opening. Um. My opponent made a... well, I guess they had to exchange or push a pawn. Wow. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any strategic errors on my part. Where did this get favorable? Oh, d5 apparently was not best. But that means Stockfish really liked my position before d5. Stockfish did not like my e5 move. Uh, well, it kind of did, but... Yeah, pawn e4 is just a complete and total lemon because the king's in the center. Although it's hard to see what white's going to do anyway. Um, no, I can't beat Stockfish on its hardest difficulty. It's too challenging. Um, so, what would have preferred to do here. Pawn h5. Pawn takes pawn. I like pawn takes pawn. Pawn h5 might make some sense to the engine, but pawn takes pawn seems like a useful change in the pawn structure while his king is still seeking shelter. Denies white the ability to push the pawn past. Uh, yeah, no, I played a solid game this game. That was not bad at all. We'll take it. Pardon me. King pawn, here we go. Oh, a French. Okay, we'll play this against the French. Knight f6. Oh. He's not playing the normal stuff here. Interesting. Um, this is almost a free pawn. Not really free, but... Um, this looks pretty... Oh, really? I did not expect that. So I have queen takes queen. Um, I have queen a4. I've probably got other queen moves here too. Queen takes queen, king takes queen, bishop g5, threatening to castle. If he takes there, I do castle. He plays king c7. I take f6, he takes f6. Uh, if I take c4, he takes f2. Um, I check on d5. So instead of taking f2 right away, he'd want to move the knight out. I check on d5 anyway. He moves his king back to b8. Uh, then I take the pawn. His pieces get active pretty quickly there. Um, I could play bishop g5. And then if he plays bishop takes pawn, we transpose into the same thing, but he doesn't get knight c6. Um, 
No, this has to be... Well, okay, the other possibility, queen a4 followed by queen takes pawn. Um, he plays knight c6 and develops his pieces. and No, he plays knight d7, or the other knight. So this is best. And then I should do this. Like I promised or planned that I was going to do. So... This is a challenging position for black, but black might be okay. If bishop takes, he's threatening to check me, so I would probably castle. Um, unless I can find something better. <clears throat> um, so, can I hold on to the pawn? No. Pawn grabbing is not going to happen here. Um... Um, let's castle, though. That way, if he plays h6, I can take here, and the knight's not protecting the other knight, so that damages his pawn structure. Plus, I put my king to safety. Um, right, so that forced him to move the king. Um, and I can do this check and then plant my knight on d6. If I want to. Or I can do this check on f4. And lure his king forward. Um, I'm going to do that, even though it's probably bad. Um, it looks exciting. Alright, so... I'm debating bringing my knight forward. Knights before bishops, they say, so we'll do the knight. Okay, so he finally is starting to get some haven for his king. Um, I'll continue development. So I got this check, but nothing really to follow it. Um, this track is beautiful, too. The whole FTL soundtrack is just... A creative work of genius. Um, this is composed by Ben Prunty. He says he was inspired by Hulse's The Planets, among other works, while he was doing his composition. You can definitely hear the influence. You can hear... Um, he's trying, to, in some ways, to emulate that symphonic um, orchestration. Let's see. Do I do knight d4? It's not even clear what that does, but there's all kinds of tactical nonsense after this move, so we're gonna do this. Only because, like, yes, he can do bishop takes knight and he can take on f2 afterward, but it's not clear what's going on. And meanwhile, I continue to activate my pieces and take the center. And really, I expected this more than anything. But I don't think this works. Because um, now I've cut off all his escape squares, he has to go forward. Um, and then this is check. Again, just a truly amazing game for me. I mean, I kind of have to retire on this one. This is, like, the best miniature I've had in about five years. Um, okay, I mean, I'm playing against a 1500, so I should expect a miniature, but... Holy crap, that was beautiful. Okay, what happened in this game, Stockfish? I know a lot of things happened that should not have happened. Um, so, c5. Oh, bishop g5 is a better way to counter this. My pawn takes pawn is a lemon, um, but I wonder why. Because my opponent obviously didn't refute it right. 
d4 I was concerned about. Although I thought I had something here, but apparently it's not okay. Okay, yeah, this is quite ugly actually. So my overly aggressive opening play is just completely unwarranted. Um, and instead of playing uh, Pawn Takes Pawn, which wastes a tempo, I should just rush my development with this. Um, okay. And then we exchange, and I develop my knight. Okay, I like this much better. I know there's only one game in the database that went like this, but bishop g5 even once is good enough, I guess. Uh, white's threatening to take on d5. There's one of two different ways, so bishop e7 makes sense. So, but how come black doesn't have, like, is bishop e7 really the way to go here? Apparently. Apparently that's the best black can do, but... Also, Stockfish actually prefers this for black. Um, which is interesting. This might be playable. Oh, this is the Tarash. No, it's not. This is some kind of ridiculous Tarash offshoot that I'm not really seeing how this works for white. This really shatters confidence in my anti-French thing here. In fact, they, they could just play c5 here. So I might need to learn a better anti-French opening um, than this. Um, bishop e... Th well, <laughs> I don't believe bishop e3 is any good, but Stockfish likes it. It's confusing. Um, okay, d takes c5 is wrong. c takes d5 is apparently the engine's number one choice. It's nowhere in the master's database, though I did consider it this game. Um... Oh, I'm sorry, that, that is, c takes d is the engine's preferred choice, but I thought it recommended bishop g5. Okay, well yeah, bishop, or pawn takes d5 is better. I should have done that instead. So I picked the wrong pawn capture in an admittedly very complex position. Alright, let's try this again. Maybe we get the same opening. Maybe this guy plays c5 and then we... Oh, maybe not. Uh, that was too much optimism on my part. Did I play queen b3 here and hit this? Queen b3 looks super uncomfortable for black. No, it actually just doesn't work at all for me. I should play knight c3 first. Because I have d5 here. So, even if I couldn't collect this C pawn, uh, this would still be good. But, um, the fact that I'm going to collect the C pawn and the center uh, means this is kind of really good for white. Um, do I do bishop takes C4? Or queen A4? Queen a4 is misguided. Both of the piece, both moves get my pieces kicked eventually, so might as well develop the bishop so I can castle. Okay, that's silly. That doesn't do anything. All right, so let's just keep developing. Um, get the better position. If he plays g5, we go back. Um, yeah, we got this. No challenges here. He's probably rated 1500. Because, again, we're playing against people who have a similar number of tournament points. Um, so, he's probably playing his heart out, but getting his rear end kicked here. Um, 
which kind of hurts. Not gonna lie, but um, I do admire the tenacity of such players who um, I don't know don't have so many points but are still playing um, like everything's at stake. Uh, whoa, so 94 is a big threat. Um, I have to play it. No, I can't. I can do this. He's going to play Rook E8. This works out okay. Both if he does Knight here or Bishop here or Rook here. Rook E1 counters all three of these ideas. And that I have this square defended and I have A8 um, under cover also. So, or E8. Why did I say A8? Um, what made me think I couldn't do this for a moment was the possibility of him playing knight d3. Okay, I missed this. This is a really good move. Um, hmm. This makes me rethink everything. Because now he's got one more piece in every attack. So do I play knight takes g5 and YOLO this? Because this is an online blitz game. And what better opportunity to YOLO something? Um, Knight takes isn't even that good. It doesn't even threaten anything. So I have to retreat. That's sad. Right, so we exchange here. Has my soundtrack ended? Where'd my soundtrack go? Where's my tunes? Uh, where is my tunes? My tunes have ended. Need my tunes back. Okay, well... Wait, can I do queen d4 here? Adding more... No? Knight d4 looks more appealing. Since I have d5 covered twice and I don't want to get this knight pinned or attacked. Um, no, I don't need to move the knight. Queen d4 would allow me to threaten rook takes rook and rook e1 to follow. And I don't see a move for him to eject my queen. I mean, he does have knight e6, but... Um, Maybe I have queen e5 there? Knight e6 exploits the fact that he's got this pin. We need my tunes, though. Where's my tunes? Music, 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 music. Play. There we go. Alright, so... My bishop's out of play. Let's get... Well, no. Do I push now? Does pushing get my bishop back into the game? He plays c6. This is not comfortable. But... Maybe that's okay. Retreating my bishop would have been a more comfortable way to try to push for I don't know what here. But this is a nice um, target too. Right, so... He checks me, but also um, plays the obvious capture that activates my piece. So, um, okay, I understand this pawn is hanging. He probably doesn't, but it doesn't matter because he didn't take it anyway. Um, um. Hmm. What a mess. Fine. You get your queen trade. Are you happy now? I'm not happy with that, but I'm still kicking here. Still giving him a fight.
You did succeed in trading queens, because I couldn't find a way to use mine. Um, maybe I can find the way to use uh, my remaining pieces. I want to push my knight to e5, but that doesn't quite work at the moment. Um, Okay, so if I get my bishop centralized, it hits this pawn. So here I am hitting the pawn with this pawn to follow. Um, okay, he's not going to try to defend against that, so we'll just take. And let's see. Ah, that gets my rook trapped. I'm going to play this instead, not getting my rook trapped. Although I'm kind of hallucinating in any event. Um, my bishop covers the square, so like bishop, my his knight on d5 and a bishop on f5 would kick my rook away, but I would get to collect both pieces. Um... Interesting. I'm in time pressure. I am almost mated, but my knight covers g4 by some freak accident, so uh, we'll take it. Gotta think here, otherwise I'd be commenting. Uh, think about this. And we win. On time. Man, that was quite tenacious. We haven't made it into the top thousand yet, but we have some good games going, we got some good tunes going. We'll keep this going a little while longer. Well, we got out of opening book, that's for sure. <laughs> um, not sure what's going on here. Other than we're having some fun playing a chess game. Um, at least it looks like chess. So... Yeah, he's not going to get to castle queenside, but I don't think he was planning on doing that anyway. Um, let's just anchor this knight in here. Or if he's not going to do anything about it, you know, just leave it be. Alright, so rookie 1 and c3 and d4 probably happen soon in some order. Um, 
Hmm. Interesting. I should have seen that coming. I have a possibility of playing e5 right here. It's really mixing things up. Let's do it. So the point is, I've split his pawns. Um, so... Here, let's gambit a pawn. <laughs> let's gambit another pawn. <laughs> Jackpot. <laughs> Got him. Oh, that's good. Except, like, his rook gets out this way. But still, I mean... This is pretty disgraceful for the Rook. I should have pushed a5. I had him! I so had him. Oh, man. That was good. That was so good. Okay, let's get the Rook out of dodge. And try to checkmate his king before he does anything with these three extra pawns. Um... Hmm... Interesting. Interesting. So... Uh, he plays D, uh, E5 then, rather. Um, okay, we'll have some fun with this, though. I know the fork is obvious, but what does he do about it? Nothing. Alright, so we got an exchange. We got some material for our BS sacrifice. Um, he's still plus one, but I mean, we'll gotta take this position. Any day of the week. This is better for white. So we got our material back. Oh no, he gave a check. Whatever will we do? Um. So do I check on d7? Um, yeah, I actually have to. Because the spawns are running too fast. Alright. So this is the point, is that even if I end up sacking a rook for a pawn or something like that, I'm getting his bishop first. Or if the bishop moves, I collect this pawn. So if the tactics work out, this is excellent for white. Otherwise, I'm completely busted. There really is no middle ground here. Um, okay, does he take my bishop? Does he play bishop d6? This is complicated. Hey, welcome. We've just got a typical Sicilian position, you know? Typical in the sense that um, you just can't evaluate it. Just have to go with the flow and see how it goes. But I think this flow of tactics is working beautifully, so we'll take it. Uh, did I play bishop e5? No, let's just take this. Before, like, my position completely melts down. Um, let's do this. And if he hits my rook, then I go back and check him again. Um, and hopefully that works out. Because I'm threatening to promote just like he is. Except I'm up a bishop at present, so... Okay, yeah, so we're just gonna go this way. But now, I've got a pawn, he's got two pawns. I don't like the rook move. That feels like a wasted move. That feels like a very slow move. Um, so we gotta check here. Oh. Oops. Um, that's not good. That's pretty much game over. Um, 
Let's see if we can fight on. Right. Right, right, right. So... Is this a perpetual check? No, because I run out of checks. Hmm. Well, that's not good. Um. Wait, no, I get a queen, though. So the fact that this is not perpetual check is okay, because I'm not made it. Still, this position that was better for me is not better for me anymore. Now you just have to know your endgames. <laughs> Easy. Easy peasy. Just know all the endgames. Um... So is he going to push the pawn? Or is he going to hold off from doing so? He's got all the trumps here, so... Yeah, he's got to be the one pushing. And I have to try to sneakily stop this advance before it gets too far. Okay, so if we can get a perpetual check, that's more than good enough. I'm stopping queen c4. Uh, ooh. Chances for a perpetual are not looking good. What's that? No more getting over it. Um, a haze fish. I don't think I ever streamed getting over it, did I? I don't even think I have the game. But we can pretend this is getting over it because um, this position's not that great. Okay, do I have a perpetual? Do I have better than a perpetual? Oh. Oh, this could be good. Probably isn't, but it could be. Whoops. Uh, okay, somehow we got a draw here. We both wanted it. That was one hell of a game. And now the action music kicks in. Our battle theme. Actually, no, this is not a battle theme. This is us. This is a new sector exploration theme. Again, by Ben Prunty. I swear, doing this doesn't do anything. Um, I'm just really lucky, question mark, with the pairings. Like, there's no way that could possibly do anything, right? I mean, it certainly looked like it was doing something, but... Um, Gosh, if that's the hack, then that would be unintentional. Um, 
That's just me screwing around while I'm waiting for my opponent to move. Oh wait, this is five minute, not two minute. Let's calm down. Um... I was just in so much time trouble the other game that I still got this bit of a rush going on here. Um, here, let's kick this. I understand this is not the most sound... Oh! Well, now it might work. Um, but until then, what I was playing was pretty unsound. Um, right. Huh, that's a really interesting transition between the two compositions. Um, that was almost seamless. But how often do you have a piece that starts on like a really high atmospheric tone? Wait, can I trap this? Or is that a perpetual check? That looks like a perpetual check. Um... Okay, this looks fun. Why did he think I wouldn't do this? Or did this move just not cross his radar at all? Maybe I should have played queen b6 already. I'm not sure. It feels like somehow I've missed the boat. Um, still, my development's okay. I can get my bishop outside my pawn chain in a few moves. Maybe sooner. Um, he's threatening knight e4. Alright, rather he's menacing it. It's not much of a threat, it's just annoying. Um, here, let's put the rook back on e5. This looks like a good square for a bishop. Surely the queen is moving now, but um, the only square I can go to is d7. And I might be able to line up some more tactics once it moves there. So... Um, just continue bringing pieces forward. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> It makes sense in one sense, it fails to make sense in another. The other being, hey look, this just opened up. Free piece. That is a hook if there ever was one. Alright, put that in Tactics Trainer. Or whatever you call the puzzle thing that's on Lee Chess. This has got to go there. Um, my train of thought there was basically, well, dang, my entire attack's been refuted, I have no ideas. 
and I was just going back to basics, like what are my captures, what are my checks, what are all the forcing sequences here, and I just happened to find a complete winner. So, yeah, not bad. We'll take it. I might have been able to take g5, but since I'm up a piece, I'm not chancing it anymore. I'm just gonna go win this. Um, preferably by boring my opponent to death, but, you know, I'll do whatever it takes here. Alright, he's not backing down, so we're going to open things up. But more importantly, I need the e-file. I need the e3 square for my rook and my queen. Um, so if I can get that by forcing him to run away, then we're going to get that by forcing him to run away. He's got rook e8. What am I thinking? Okay. Well, the rooks are opposed. Maybe I can trade some pieces here. Um, maybe I can trade some pieces here. Does he really want to play this endgame? I am up a piece. Okay. I'm more than willing to play this endgame. This is way more fun for white than it is for black, so... But, yeah, we can play it. That's okay. Oh, that's a free pawn. It's a free pawn that I don't want to take just yet. It's a free pawn that's always going to be free. So let me step out of the check first, and then take it. Um, <laughs> okay, I played an unwise move. I'm gonna take a step back uh, and not completely F things up. So now we get the free pawn and he has no check. Um, I should have just taken g5 of course with the knight, forking the king in the knight, but I missed a move there. Alright, so I guess the next time I lose or draw, we're gonna withdraw and then play some go or something. Uh, but also I need a lunch break. So... Uh, look forward to this wrapping up sometime soon. I can't possibly win every game. This is like I've played a Budapest, but not had to gambit upon. This is pretty good for black. That's creative. I expected him to pin the knight. Um. 
where my development plan would have been pretty obvious. Here it's not so obvious what I'm doing. Um, other than just trying to bring pieces forward. Uh, okay, so this is maybe an idea. I'm trying not to make any pawn weaknesses, but you know I'm going to make a mistake somewhere. Weaknesses will arise somehow. Um, I want the center file. So we take the file and then... He's probably going to put the rook back, but at least I gained a tempo. This oh, Actually... Uh, yeah, bishop takes bishop would give me a tempo. I'm trying to see how many free tempi I can get. Um... Hmm. Do I do knight a5? Every free tempo counts. Um... Yeah, what the heck. His pieces are disorganized here, so... We gain a tempo on this bishop. And then I get that tempo lets me bring my rook out. So the yeah, the obvious candidate is king e two. King f two is probably fine too. Um if he takes on a seven I just trap the bishop. Well no, I actually just take on d two. Um so I'm going to put the pawns on the light squares. Because that's where my chances lies, with my bishop on the dark squares and my pawns on the light squares. Hmm. Do I have a trap here? I don't think so. have to do this. Interesting. Well? Okay, I didn't expect that. He should be trying to get counterplay on the queen side, but apparently he's not trying to do that. Okay, so we're just going to win this endgame. Easy peasy. Um, take the center? No, deal with the doubled pawns. I have to deal with the doubled pawns here. Um, he's threatening c4 check. Anchor this on a dark square. That's going to be my only advantage this game, so I should savor it. If he plays c4, I cannot capture it, because that mobilizes his pawns. Um, oh, but then he's going to just play bishop d4. So this is getting challenging. This might not be winning anymore. Um, I'm debating if he checks... Me. Oh! No, you don't resign that unless, like, you just really don't want to play it. That might have been a draw. That might have been a draw. Let's see, can I make an attack of this somehow? This looks fun. Worst case I'm losing a pawn, best case I'm winning the game. So that's why I take chances like this. It's good entertainment. Not necessarily good chess.
but very good entertainment. Um, okay, forget the pawn. Who needs it? <laughs> he doesn't need it either. Despite having played this opening, which invited this shot. Um, now he's had quite enough of this opening. Okay. I see how it is. I see I'm not the only troll out here. That's lovely. Alright, so let's take that. Um... Yeah, now my development's better. I just might be losing a pawn. So... Uh, the key word being might be losing a pawn. There's no guarantee that this is uh, bad. So... Yeah, let's just play normal chess. I don't want your bishop. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, fine, I'll take it. You convinced me, buddy. Well done. Have a cookie. Alright, so... Yeah, that's not a good move on my part. Well, it liquidates. But knight to b5 would have been far better. Um, I wonder, can I just checkmate him here? Don't try this at home. And by that I mean, um, this is probably unsound, but it looks way too fun for me to pass up. So we're doing it. So, he offered his bishop on g2. Likewise, I'm just offering my bishop on c7, you know, because I can. What you gonna do, take it? This is great. Okay, he took it. But yeah, my point is that, like, now when my knight moves off of c6, um that I've got like knight b6 forking the king in whatever piece ends up on d7 at the end of a forced sequence. So, I also have knight b8. In case all this completely fails for some reason, I can still play knight b8 and try to hold on. Looks like this is all failing for some reason. Um... So let's just develop a piece. Okay. Uh, so I don't have checkmate in the opening. My, like, early opening checkmate gambit thing didn't quite work out. Um, um, how do I take this? What a mess. It's definitely my game because it's messy. Um, I think king f7 is warranted here. But if you find yourself playing king f7 in the opening, chances are you might have misplayed something. 
But yeah, he might survive this somehow. Wait, do I play knight d8 here? Sacrificing stuff to... No, knight d8's illegal. Um... I wish I could. Alright, we're just going to defend our material. We're up three points after all. We're up three pawns. There aren't any points in chess, just pawns. Um, so... Let's see, do I push d4? Or does that make no sense here? Do I do knight takes? Let's do knight takes. Oh, my king's under attack now. Knight takes is... Oh no, wait. He can't do queen takes d5. I'm actually okay for a tempo. Um, but now my king's under attack. That's illegal. Let's take this. Well, that was an adventure and a half now, wasn't it? All to reach this position. Uh, check. Oh, King F7's safer. I did not expect King F7, but it would have been a much safer way to approach this for black. That sucks for black. That was quite a game. Me pushing around a 1400, you know. But we sure refuted that, um, whatever that was. Alright, so... And these guys are tenacious. Here, let's play this. I hear this is supposed to be a French line. never played Queen E2 French before, but it seems like this must be a thing, right? Now, question... Um, here. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Seriously? Um... So, yeah, this opens up this shot, this opens up a knight fork, this opens up if he trades here, this pin becomes useful. And even assuming all that weren't problematic enough, like, I don't know. I mean, he's got h6, but, like, everything I'm doing lands with tempo here. Alright, 1900. Well, yeah, I should play this Queen E2 French more often if I'm just going to win in 11 moves every time. Let's analyze that. How'd we do? Um, okay. Huh, there's no cloud evaluation for this because nobody's... Oh, there it is. Yeah, so G3 is apparently fine. Um, Knight C3, Knight F3... Oh, G3 is actually the main move. I assumed it would be d4, but okay. Um, yeah, no, I just nailed it. Out of the park. That was cool. It's a knight bd7. Um, yeah, here I was just trying to provoke h6, which is what he should have done. Oh, apparently I should liquidate here instead of running away. Um, 
which kind of brings Bishop A G Bishop G5 into question in the first place. But what would Stockfish do here? Castle. Okay, but like, supposing he did do this, what if I just run away? Is this so bad? Uh, okay, giving him a free tempo is not so good. Okay. Well said, Stockfish, well said. Still, pretty good game on my part. Oh, we're going to crack the 1000 barrier. Nice. That doesn't mean I'm going to stay in it to try to win it, but... Um, how great is it when you can use your analysis from the last game on the next game? So I should just castle here. And make the best use of my tempo. Um, I didn't think he'd do that. How does this work again? How does this work again? Oh, I'm hanging a knight. Never mind. Well, that says it's time to retire. Um, we'll still try to win this, but it's going to be an uphill battle. Oh, crap. <laughs> He's got rookie... yeah. Right, right, right. So I have to develop this way, which gives up the pawn, and... Oh, this is not good. This is really not good. Hmm. Okay. A chance to make it complicated. Much appreciated, sir. Um... I mean, I'm going to fail on this, but why not? Let's try something. Try to make it complicated. Oh, okay. Damn. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, man. So that shows, like, overconfidence is my weakness. gonna do this anyway. We started. There's no stopping it. Alright, so... This is gonna be the one front I'm gonna try to push on there. There we go. See? Just completely refuted what's A3 is the Saragossa, is that right? The Saragossa has been refuted. Assuming that's what 1A3 is. Um, Alright, apparently this is the best use of my tempo, so... Um, Let's try to push b5 as soon as possible here. Um, this is going to provoke a4. But I couldn't stop it. But, um, so having provoked a4... Oh shit, I forgot about that. Well, there goes my g5 idea. Or G4. I was going to push G4 next, um, having guarded my rook. 
Alright, so we've got to play chess here. Um, fine. Chess it is. <sighs> okay, we'll go back. Try not to get mated here. Uh, let's play this forward. Ooh, I made this complicated. Um, okay, let's not open this just yet. We need to keep things closed just a couple moments longer while I wind up for uh, this big knockout punch. Um, might have to take the other knight. I really wanted to take this one on d5. Okay, I think I get to take the knight on d5. That was the knight I wanted to capture, so that's good. Um, so this position would suck, except I have this little check here. And this little check changes our evaluation just a bit. Um, by the way, um, humans can evaluate positions, not just engines. Humans can also do evaluations. So I'm evaluating this as preferable for me. Um, Object, uh, evaluations can be both uh, concrete or qualitative or quantitative, rather. So qualitatively, um, I like the quality of Black's position quite a bit. Quantitatively, I'm up in exchange, um, although making the best use of that exchange is challenging here, because um, there's all kinds of pawns in the way. but I will find a way to break through because that's my goal here. Um, so I'm making sure his knight can't jump into c7. Um, Actually, since this knight's a short-range piece, um, I could do this kind of thing, too. Um, okay, so... He is right that he could shuffle here. The burden is on me to find something. Um... That's a really interesting point here. I might have blown my chance. Yeah, okay, fine. We'll have to agree to a draw then, because I have no way to break through. Is he going to actually... Okay, yeah, there we go. Well played. Well spotted, even, that that fortress was possible. There wasn't anything I could do about it. Huh. Well, I totally deserve that for how I played the opening, then. Very interesting. I've never seen things resolve that way. Alright, so... I'm trying to crack the top 1,000 spaces just for the fun of it. Um, uh, 
I don't think this is a Trompowski thing. But I'm not totally sure. I've play, actually played this before in the chess or the Lee Chess Ladder. I think uh, that was run by Amazingoid. I think I've played this very opening. Um, though I'm forgetting how I did it. Well, my knight's not under attack, so I have a tempo to do stuff. Okay, and uh, his knight is threatening to go, I'm not sure where. Oh, right, so he actually does have a threat of knight c7. I was trying to castle. I'm not going to get to castle, though. Because if I allowed knight c7, um, well, okay, now, oh, now I do get to castle. Um, knight c7 without knight d5 um, was too strong of a threat. So I had to counter it. Says bishop c7 trap my queen? Well no, I'm threatening to win his queen on the spot, so he has to deal with that first. Um, but this is precarious. Um, hmm. <laughs> Back we go. <laughs> that covers C7. I think. I hope. <laughs> if that doesn't, I don't know what will. Should have just played E5. But that weakens my pawn structure. And the pawn is the soul of chess. We can't be weakening our pawn structure. We can't be compromising on such matters. Um... So, what now? Oh, really? That's nice. I'll take that. Um, I don't want the knight, though. I kind of do, but I kind of don't. Like my, I like my bishop better than his knight. So let's keep this tension a while, shall we? Although I'm really rerouting to hit this. All right. Um. So the obvious move here is rook a d one. That's less obvious, but um, I thought I could gain a tempo here somehow. Let's take this. Let's get rid of the threat on e5 so I have time to initiate my own threats. Or I should have just played a6. a6 would have dispensed with his threats, though it would have encouraged knight d5. Like knight c3 back to d5, so... Yeah. Um. Hmm. I don't exactly like that move. So rook d3 was my big threat or idea here. It doesn't do anything, does it? Does knight d3 do anything? Can I improvise here? Just feels like I should have something. Okay, I could take on b2 and get my knight trapped. Let's do this instead. He's trapped his knight. Rook b3 is a threat, but, um, well, but nothing. It's actually a pretty big threat here. 
Um, knight d6 is a threat. Knight d6 is still a threat. Uh, do I play? Do I allow it to occur? Yes. We allow knight d6 because I'm going to counter that with. Okay, well, he's going to just give me the knight. What a charitable dude. Either he calculated that correctly or just gave in for some reason. Not sure which. Um, let's get the queen out of dodge, or rather, allow this knight to move again. Well, I'm giving up a pawn to do this. This could be unwise. This could be very unwise. Uh-oh. I'm possibly giving up more material. Because I'm being an idiot. Oh, that's not good. Um, that's really not good. Alright, so we're giving back... Heavy, we're giving up the bishop... Um, to get this position. Um, This is still disgusting. If he pushes on the king side, I get this with tempo. If he pushes b4, I get the bishop. Alright, so I'm still in time pressure. Well played, sir. Well played. I tried to play a long move and it didn't work out. Um, I should have paid more attention to the time situation. <sighs> I cannot go down on a game like that. We have to conclude on a better note. Here we go. I am not very happy about that, the way that concluded. Or rather, I'm not happy with my time management skill. I should have managed my time far better than I did that game. I'm not sure what went wrong. I guess I found the game too interesting. Honestly, I think that was it. Um... 
Well, I have the knight pair, and well, as we all know, knights are better than bishops. Um, so, hopefully I can capitalize on my knight pair. How do I increase pressure on this side of the board? I guess I liquidate. Um, these trades will occur whether we want them to or not. So we can just ignore that side of the board for the time being because everything gets liquidated. Okay, that's a free pawn now. Knight takes knight. Yeah. Oh shit. Ha! <laughs> he should have just taken my knight. I screwed up so badly there. For one tempo, he had me. I got so into the music um, that I completely forgot about the chess position. I think that's a good thing. Although it's not good for the chess. So, Oh shit, I forgot about that. Well, hopefully this endgame's okay. Because it's not looking good. This is seriously not go looking good. Um...
So opposite color bishop endgames favor the attacker. Here the attacker is obviously black. Here I'm obviously scrounging to try to find some activity at all, so I'm not completely out of it. F3 checks interesting, but I don't think best. Um, I think I might be able to salvage a draw, but yeah, this is a sign things are not going well. So if B2, um, I can exchange our queenside pawns and try to hold on to the king side for dear life. Or if they screw up, then I'm just winning. Um, you have to be really careful in these end games um, and know where all the chances lie. This move was completely forced, but it seems to be more than sufficient. Now granted, I still can't win with it. Oh, now that he moved the bishop, I might have some winning chances. Um, I'm not going to let that fall with check. If I have a choice. Maybe I don't have a choice. Um, a6, bishop takes. King moves. Bishop somewhere. We're going to chance it all on this. This is super uncomfortable, but... Um, oh, this doesn't work at all. Never mind. It's a good try, but it doesn't hold things together at all. Um, Dang. Okay, I can actually exit on that note. I just choose not to. Oh, Zog is streaming. Oh, goodness. Well, we'll have to finish this up, won't we? Uh, maybe I can play good moves this game to make up for all my other games. I don't think queen b6 was unreasonable there. I don't think it's a trap or anything. I think that's a legit move that white has to be concerned about. Okay, this is silly. Um, I see lots of ideas in this position, but um, yeah, Queen uh, does not belong in A4. So yeah, that's a better square for the Queen, but I still get this tempo. Pieces become active. Uh, this is pretty nice. Uh, 
Um, that's a good move. That makes me pause and reconsider everything in this position. Some of the moves that followed were not as good as that one particular move, which is just awesome. Um, he is up on time, but his position's kind of eroded at this point. Um, so we've trapped the bishop. He ignores my taunt, which is probably a good thing. Good game. We won a game. Okay, can I crack the top 1,000, though? Or is that like like what everybody's trying to do here? I do want to wait. I thought Zug was streaming. Where did Zug go? I guess we have too many people streaming all at once. But let me see what he's up to. We gotta watch Zug. Uh, he's pretty funny. Okay, we're gonna... oh, well, he's not taking it then. Um, so this is just a normal Vienna. Okay, so... Ah, I see Zug's stream title is Zug is not drunk on LeeChess.org. Oh man. Like, how do you lead with a title like that and have any gravitas? I don't get it. I guess you have the gravitas because you're just that good of a chess player. You can make the stream title whatever you want. Um, and people will look up to your awesome chess playing ability. Uh... Also, how am I the first person to have thought of the idea that, like, um, you heard the March Madness brackets are busted. I'm the first one to try to connect that, apparently, with, um, people's favorite chess champion or whatever having their candidates busted. It's not the same thing, but I still think it's funny. Like, any attempt to draw a parallel there between March Madness, um, popular sporting event and the candidates the less popular sporting event uh, anyway I've explained the joke I've beaten it to death it's not even a joke because I'm not awake enough to make one but um, okay so um, All right, I'm just going to hold on to this g4 square. Noting that my check on h4 didn't go anywhere, so we're just going to play it by ear. So d3 is a target. Okay. d3 is still a target. I'm going to stay on target here. Um, he could take on g4. I should have calculated that before playing into this forcing variation. Because um, there's the possibility he might not just immediately mess up and might not immediately just give me an exchange or better. Um, 
but it might actually take a second to calculate things. Uh, unfortunately for him, that possibility is no longer possible. Um, we've won an exchange. Maybe this will get me into the top thousand and I can retire and go um, watch our national master from Arcata while I have some lunch. I think all those things would be positive steps here. I say as I try to calculate some tricky nonsense to end the game as quickly as possible. I am already up a pawn, although <sighs> pawns will come and go. Um, here, let's exchange a bit. Let's exchange a bit more. And then hold on to this position. Try to crystallize these pawns long enough for me to get my pieces into action. Oh, but he has bishop a4. He might win my e-pawn. Oops. Alright, win my e-pawn then. Anything that just lets me start using my rook. Okay, now we can start using the rook. So cut the king off of the east half of the board. I would call it the king's side, except look where the kings are. The kings are both on the queen's side. Um... Alright, um, so that's a free pawn. If you've played an endgame or two, you know how to collect pawns with the rook. Maurice actually, actually um, made some, helped contribute to software back in the 90s called uh, Maurice Ashley Teaches Chess. And he has exercises about how do you move the rook around the board and start taking all the pieces. Um, it's a fun children's exercise and very instructive visualization. Um, actually, Lee Chess has a similar uh, basics thing. All right, are we in the top thousand yet? Yeah, we crossed the top thousand. Well, okay, we got one more pairing though. One more pairing and then we'll pause. I tried to pause. I was too slow. Um, Okay, so I don't typically play this variation. I don't know what's going on here. Um, I think this is still considered a C3 Sicilian, but I don't know. We're kind of transposing into stuff I kind of sort of know. Um, Oh, this is way off beat, even in those lines. Um, all right, do I do queen c2? No, we anchored this bishop. We cement it in place. We say none shall pass this bishop, even though that bishop's going away very soon here. Um, but... Uh, um, no, like, I control a, quite a few light squares, so there's some chance of me launching an attack here. Um, so I just want to slice through on all the light squares if I can. I played this to defend e4 among all the other benefits it has. So defending e4 allows me to move my knight. Moving the knight will allow me to move the bishop, which in turn, I don't know, will allow me to keep developing. He has knight d5 here. I don't know if I'm afraid of it. Um... Actually, my knight's defended by my other knight, so what am I afraid of? Yeah, I mean, there's b5, but why should I fear this? He's bringing his pawns closer to my side of the board, where I can more easily attack them. Um, oh, 
Likewise, I brought my pawns a bit too far. Um, <laughs> that's not good. I have to do this? That undefends my knight. Jeez. Okay, so I have to retreat. That's not good. I mean, it's not beautiful. I might still have stuff with bishop f4 and rook c1. But yeah, knight c5 was good and a standard Sicilian move, and I should have seen it coming. Um, from like 300 miles away. B4, on the other hand, is overextended. Um, and just lets my pieces into the game. There was no reason to do b4. Alright, so he wants to put the knight on e5, and I can't really stop that. But can I do something constructive while that's happening, perhaps? Um, this feels constructive? I don't know what I'm up to here. Knight c4 is an idea. You might just play queen b6. I'm not sure what I do against queen b6. Maybe rook b1. He's got me in defense mode where I'm just responding to threats, as opposed to making them. Um. Okay, this opposes the bishop on the long diagonal, so I'm no longer hanging material. Do I do pawn takes? Mm. I'm gonna chance it. This feels risky, but with some risk is some reward, so... Oh, actually, this allows me to be very active here. Um, because I have rook h3. So accidentally all my pieces are landing on good squares now. So this threat is not too subtle, but, I mean, it is somewhat masked. Alright, so... We're going to do this anyway. Possibly knight c6 would have worked, but I'm chancing it all here. I think I have better odds with this, because he doesn't get to play knight f8. Well, he does get to play knight h5. Um, first things first. Um, what a mess. So I have to do this, otherwise I could get back ranked. Although maybe knight takes e4 was the right way to counter this. This allows me to plant a bishop or something on c6, so the back rank threats go away for good. But knight takes e4 on the spot might have completely refuted the whole thing. Um, 
I'm not sure. Knight takes e4. I would have had to take on c8 with my rook and sack my queen. We trade queens, but that's messy. Um... So the key point for him here is that he's threatening mate. Um, it's kind of important. Um, oh, I want to do something about the mate threat. So we lift this. He's got queen b1 check. And my whole position collapses. That sucks. Alright, well, we'll have to play this endgame. This is not an endgame I wanted to play, but we'll have to play it. With 20 seconds on the clock. So, one thing I'll have to do here is g4. Um... Maybe I can liquidate enough pawns to make this not completely terrible. Sucks. Oh boy! Well, that's unfortunate. Well, well, well. Okay, I mismanaged my time. Well, no. I didn't even go berserk that game. I've just been doing poor time management throughout this event. In any event, um, I need to cool off after that. I still haven't had lunch. still have to clean up and prepare for some playing some other games, so... Thanks for watching. It's been a fun session. And with that, I'll turn the program over to our national master. So, see you next time.